There's a guy that's been generously giving me materials a front that owns a sawmill near me. And I've been wanting to kind of get at this uh, leaf spring and see if I can make something decent out of that. So uh, this video is probably going to be about me turning a piece of leaf spring into a K-bar style knife for a friend of mine. Stay tuned folks, it should get interesting. I've heard that some of these leaf springs get kind of mm, cracked in their service life and uh, then when you put all that work into them during the heat treating process, you end up cracking it anyways and then you put all that work into it for nothing. So um, I've already found one that I'm not going to use. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this on camera there, but this one here has already got pretty severe cracks right across here. So this piece is going to be a big fat no-no. Not going to use that piece. Uh, this piece here is more steel than I need. Way more steel. Although I'm probably going to cut whatever I use anyway. Um, and uh, this one receives a lot of abuse because this is the one that connects under the vehicle. So I'm not going to use this one. I think this here is the one I'm going to use, the one from the middle, and uh, I might cut it off here and then just use half of it. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. So my current dilemma is to either cut that, because this is way more steel than I need, cut it like, I don't know, right there maybe? I mean, this guy only wants a, about a five and a half inch blade, and technically the kind of knives he's talking about, kind of like a military K-bar, um, has a hidden tang, although I might do full tang on it, I haven't decided yet, but uh, I don't know, I'm thinking about using this as a handle here while I'm forging that end. I don't know, what do you all think? Feel free to comment, tell me how silly I am. So hot in my hand. Ooh. Yeah, so I ate dinner. This is still a little bit hot, but I, I can't keep holding on to it with this glove over on this end. It's just getting too hot. I can't work it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to cut it off with a bandsaw. Hopefully, I don't burn anything. Yeah, I suck at forging. I gotta draw this out, really. I probably need to be using the cross paint. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I'm sure there's guys watching this right now 
And they're thinking this guy has no idea what he's doing. Those guys would be correct. <laughs> oh man, I do not know how to move metal, man. I'm not a blacksmith. Um, trying to learn. I'm trying to get this piece here drawn out longer and a little bit thinner and then I want to flatten it down to make it the appropriate width for a knife because this is like this is like almost a half an inch way way too big Man, I gotta make some tongs. This is ridiculous. Yeah, that worked out freaking great. Oh boy. Oh boy. Come on, you. <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, I need tongs. Yeah, this is great. It's exactly how I like to do things. Why? Why is it doing that? Jeez, man, hopping everywhere. Yeah, this is this is amazing. This is great stuff here. Well, let's see if I can hold on to this. Ah, uh, well, here goes. Let's see with a better handle on it if I could do a little more to getting that down to a proper knife shaped billet. So, I think I'm going to attempt my first hot cut, even though I don't have a hardy hole or a Pritchard hole or any tools that I can put in there. I'm going to try a hot cut just on that sharp edge right there. Try to nip off at least a couple of inches of that because it's just, I don't need to be moving that much metal. It's too big. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna let that cool a little bit. I'm gonna try to break that puppy off. We'll see how she goes. Okay, whoo, just quenched in water. The hot cut piece. 
I don't see any cracks. I want to take another little, little piece, small piece, and uh, kind of go ahead and make a little bitty blade shape and practice some heat treating. In case any of you all are wondering, I quenched that in uh, soapy water. That's what I used. Not preheated. Room temperature. Uh, definitely hardened. Let's have a look, see, and this... Uh, oh my goodness! I don't think my vice is able to handle this. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go downstairs. My other, better vice. Now let's try to break this puppy. Oh my goodness! I need a pipe or something. Um, wow. That's a hard piece of steel. That's not even that thick. It's about, I don't know, over an eighth, probably three sixteenths. I need a better pair of flyers. So I'm kind of impressed with this uh, spring steel from a leaf spring. All right, let's try a little bit more aggressive on that the big old pipe. Oh, wow, that took a lot to do it though. That is not very thick. That's, uh, I don't know. Something like around 3 8 well now probably, excuse me, 3 16 and uh, wow, that was tough to break. This will be great for making cutting edges and knives. I mean that grain structure is extremely fine in that, and it took a huge freaking piece of, uh, I don't know, what was that, inch and a half tubing, about two feet long to really snap it. And that's, uh, I don't think you would drop that on the ground and have that shatter. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go any further. I'll worry about tempering it back maybe later, but that's amazing. So after testing it out, uh, this little piece here is somewhere between HRC 55 and HRC 60. So uh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, my really, uh, my last knife was right around 60. I mean, the 60 would barely nip it, it kind of skated a bit. This one kind of cut in with the 60 a little bit, but uh, definitely skated good with the 55. So this is somewhere between 55 and 60. That's that's knife quality hardness. You're going to hold a pretty good edge at that hardness. So uh, I'm pretty pleased. I'm kind of getting excited about this knife build just based on the qualities of this steel and the potential future for me using leaf springs. Okay, so probably can't see it down here. I did a semi sharpened edge and a torch temper. Uh, and I'm kind of curious to see if that basic torch temper was enough to bring this back to being a little more bendy and a little less brittle. Although it still took a lot, even when it was brittle, to break it. Let's see, I don't know if I got enough to get a hold of now. Yeah. So we're starting at about a 45 with this. Oh, that's too, oh that temper worked good. Oh, it slipped off, but that's about 45 degrees. Yeah, look at that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that temper definitely made it a little less brittle. All right, that bent. Uh, Quite a bit before it broke that time, at least a good 45 degrees. Probably could be tempered a little more, but man, I don't know when a knife's ever going to be put in a situation where it's going to be any uh, worse than that. So I'm not really sure where the little piece uh, from the last test went, but uh, this piece here will give you an idea of how much it bent before it snapped. I mean, that was a pretty good bend. I'd say about a 45 degree. Before it snapped. That's pretty good toughness. 